Welcome to the last part of lecture three. We're going to change topics slightly and we're going to talk a little bit about some computer algebra programs. Now, as, as we just saw over the course of the last two lectures, Gaussian elimination is a procedure that's very important in, in linear algebra for solving system and linear equations. Now, the nice thing is Gaussian elimination can easily be implemented in a, in a computer package or a computer program. And two program uh, systems that can do this are MATLAB, which is specifically designed to work with matrices and do complicated things in uh, linear algebra, and Octave, which is a part of a larger package of math software tools. Now, in a non-COVID year, if we weren't all stranded at home, you would actually be able to use MATLAB in the computer campus labs. You can purchase it if you want, but it's not needed for this course. In fact, what we've done is we've made sure that everybody can use Octave. Octave has the advantage of being free online, and it has the required functionality for Math 1B03. If you were to go on to more complicated courses or courses that needed more functionality, maybe physics or engineering, you may at some point want to really uh, use the full force of MATLAB. But for this course, Octave will be good enough. Here's the website. We'll go there in a second. You can make an account, but it's not needed. Okay, so let's go over to the website, which is octave-online.net. And here we are. If you were to punch that in, you'll come into this particular website. If you wanted to sign in, yeah, click on the menu. You can sign in with Google. Uh, you can make your own uh, password. Uh, you can even change the theme. You can change the color if you want. I don't like that one particularly. Let's go back to the other one. Uh, now, th there's no advantage really to having an account, except if you're going to be running scripts, but we won't really be doing that in this course. Okay, so let's close this. Okay, so obviously, if you want to be doing this in linear algebra, the first thing that we want to be able to do is input a matrix. So let me do that. I will show you a matrix. 1, minus 2, 3, 9. So this is going to be my first row. Then I put a semicolon to say to start the next row. Minus 1, 3, 0, 0, minus 4. That's my second row. And then 2, minus 5, 5, and 17. And I hit enter, and it shows me my matrix right here. Now, in, over the last two lectures, as I said, we've been learning about Gaussian elimination, and this is built into Octave. We can just say, I want to find the row reduce echelon form, R, R, E, F of my matrix A, and there it will go. It will output 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 2. Okay, before we go any further, let me just give you a, a nice quick tip if you make a mistake or you want to change things. If you hit your up cursor, it will cycle through your last couple of commands. So I hit up once and I got the previous command. I hit up again and I get it, the command before that. And that's great if you said, oh, I, I didn't want 17, I wanted 18. So then you can hit enter, it changes the value of A, and then you could ask it to row reduce it again. And here is the answer. You notice for this example, now we have a bunch of decimal digits. It's because in the original one that we had, it could stay within integers and do all the calculations with integers. But in this particular example, say right here, we're getting uh, numbers involving fractions. So Octave and MATLAB, I think the default is to do five, di five uh, digits decimal precision. So you have to kind of keep that in mind as you're doing it. So let me just kind of go back to this equation and just change it back to 17 and we can put it into oops go back up twice and put it in row reduced echelon form okay if you have a second you should go back to our lecture notes and um, think about well have you seen this particular matrix before and we have let's go back all the way to the beginning Oh, I, here's my cursor right here. The matrix on the left is actually the matrix that we inputted. And here is the other interesting thing that you should see is we found that the solutions was 1, negative 1, and 2. And if we go back here, there is the 1, negative 1, negative 2. So we're actually able to read the solution off. Okay. Now, there's lots of things that you can do with Octave. You can uh, take some time and try some of the commands. Let me just show you one thing. 
So we can ask, what is the size of A? It gives us a num two numbers, three and four. And the way that you should read this is it's telling me that there are three rows and four columns. As we go through the course, and if there's something that can be done in Octave, I'll let you know, and I'll give you an example of it in progress. Okay. Now, as another example here, let's say that we want to how do how would we actually want to do this to say solve systems of linear equations okay so some t let's say i were to give you the particular system that we had before okay let, sorry let me find my cursor here we'll go back to this particular system and let me show you a different way of solving the system of linear equations so I can now let say A be the matrix one, negative two, three, negative one, three, zero, and two minus five and five. So this is, oh, there's a syntax error. I had two negative signs. This is the coefficient matrix of the matrix that I started with. And then I want to know what is it equal to. So we'll, we'll call this my matrix uh, A little a for what I want it to equal to. So I want to make it as a, a three by one matrix. So this is row one, this is row two, and this is row three. Okay. And if I use the command lin solve a a, and I spelled lin solve wrong, there we go, out pops the answer that I was looking for, which is the one that we saw is one, negative one, two. Okay, now you have to be very careful when you use the command lin solve. Okay, and there's also another command that does the exact same thing. If I do a backslash a, I also get that's another way to get the answer. Okay, so let, let's try seeing what happens when we stick in some of the other problems that we did. Okay, let me find that particular problem. Okay. Let's say we look at example two. Example two, we knew that there was no answer. So let's see how what MATLAB will do for us. So we have one minus, or octave, excuse me, one minus three, one. Then we have two minus one minus two, and one, two minus three. There's my matrix B. Uh, and we want it equal to B, little b, one, two, minus one. Okay, and I just want to double check to make sure that we have the right things. One, two, minus one. Yeah, okay, everything looks good. And we do a uh, same thing, B minus B. And, oh, you're getting an answer, which is kind of strange, right? Because we've proved in our exercise over here that there should be no solution. So what's going on? Well, actually, Octave is telling us that there is no answer and saying, warning the matrix singular to uh, machine precision. We haven't used the word singular, but really what it's saying is that it showed up with a row of zeros, but it wasn't sure if um, uh, wasn't sure if it was just an error on our side or if there was an error in its computations along the way. So what it's trying to do is give you the best possible answer. So to check whether when you see this warning, you you have to think, oh, something's not working exactly right. So one way to check uh, what's going on is you can make a new matrix. Let's call it um, B big, and B big we're going to make by taking the matrix B that I started with and adjoining the, all the answers. So basically, what we're doing is making taking the coefficient matrix, adjoining what everything is equal to to make the augmented matrix. And we can go row reduced echelon form of B big. And when we stare at it, we go, we look at the bottom row and say, oh, but I got 0, 0, 0, 1. It's quite possible that there is no solution. Okay. So even when you use this command and you're getting a not answer, it does not actually mean that there is a an answer to your system of linear equations. What's actually trying to do is saying, this guy is not an exact solution to your system, but it's as close as I can get it. Okay, so as close as I can get to the numbers one, two, negative one. Okay. Let's try an infinite example as well. Okay, so our infinite example had the following coefficient matrix. Okay. 
is my coefficient matrix. And these were the values that it was equal to, 1, 5, 4. And I ask it to solve it. Okay, and again, it's finding me an answer and it's only giving me one answer. So the question is, well, is this the only answer or are there an infinite number of answers? And what you can do is then use what we just did. We're going to make a bigger matrix. We'll form the augmented matrix and we say, can you show me what the row reduced echelon form is? And when we look at the row reduced echelon form, we notice that there are some free variables showing up. So what this is telling me is that this is an, an answer. I'm not getting a warning, so this is an answer. When I look at the row reduce echelon form, I'm not getting a pivot in each column, so it's telling me that this is an answer, but there are an infinite number of answers. Okay, so that's a very quick introduction to Octave. Um, feel free to hunt around, Google things, give it a try. It's, you're more than welcome to use it in your homework problems to check your answer. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, as we go through the course, we'll come back and, and expand upon the functionality of, of Octave, of how, how to use it in the course. Okay, so just to kind of wrap up here, okay, for what did we learn today? There are a bunch of key ideas. I guess some of the key ones are that the the shape of the reduced or of the, the shape of the echelon matrix tells us the number of solutions. And we can also use Gaussian elimination. and find these solutions. And also the last thing that we learned is we have computer help. Okay, we have some computers that can give us a help. So those are kind of the big topics from today's class and we'll carry on in our, our in our next lecture. See you then.